Hey, what's up? Welcome back, everyone, to the Iceman Isaac Academy, the second channel of the Warzone Academy dedicated specifically to coaching every single day. Today, we are looking at the new world record, and that is a solo quad 44 kill game by Mutex. You guys may know him. He is a you know, a legacy search and destroy player, one of the best players there, and he's crushed a lot of world records on Warzone as well. And today we are taking a look at how he rotates, how he wins gunfights, and most importantly, how he's able to win solo quad gunfights, despite the fact that this is a no movement meta, too, too fast, too tactical. There has to be something here for outplay, and we're going to try to learn it today. If you guys enjoy the style of gameplay where I review not only my gameplay, but pro gameplay, and especially your gameplay, Shout out to Hydra over on Twitch for gifting 20 gifted subs. Make sure to follow this channel for more and join us over here on Twitch to catch this action live where you can review your gameplay. If you want your gameplay review, check out the pinned comment and the description. Without further ado, enjoy today's video. Peace. But without further ado, we're going to jump in. We're taking a look at Mutex. Mutex is a well-known player within the Search and Destroy scene and also the Warzone competitor. Incredible player and obviously very talented to rock solo squad. If you want to watch Mutex's stream, it'll be linked in the pinned comment. Um, or I'm sorry, it'll be linked in the description. Mutex as well. If you can see the timer up there, he is rocking a subathon. He's been streaming nonstop as well to excite, uh, you know, to get ready for Warzone 2. So make sure to go over and show him some love at the end of today's video. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're we're really going to be breaking down, you know, some of this initial mixy gunfight really isn't anything too crazy. Um, I do want to point out one thing real quick, though. We're going to be looking at rotations. We're going to be looking at how he wins individual gunfights. And then most importantly, we're going to look at how he is finessing. In a game with incredibly fast time to kill, how was he able to take out an entire squad solo? The little thing here I always like to point out is whenever we plate, we plate for information. So we're putting those plates in. We're not just hiding in a corner, right? We're putting the plates in and we're doing what's called shouldering, which is where we get in and out of cover to see information whether or not we're getting pushed. And then if we're getting pushed, then we can either hide and continue to put in plates and then pull out our gun or cancel the plating and fight or run away and finesse. Now, he does play 2020 sensitivity. You can't see it down below, but down below my webcam, he is playing 2020 max sensitivity. So some of his gameplay will look pretty cracked. But at the end of the day, 2020 isn't as crazy as it makes it seem. Because aim slowing in this game will, will, will slow you on target pretty well. He also has changed some of his damage indicators. So one of the big things that a lot of people don't realize when they're playing the game is there are indicators on your map that will show you the direction that you got shot. So when he got shot over here, it will point in the direction that he got shot from, which will be a great tool for you to tell how to get undercover. Oh my god. No. Wow. So really risky reach out there on the first one. He ends up spotting that guy behind the head glitch. Runs around this head glitch. If that guy got greedy and pushed through and was running with that gun up in the tactical sprint and the amount of time it takes to pull your gun down in this game, he would have absolutely fried him. He ends up challenging the back head glitch. And then Mutex puts his head down, assuming that that guy's going to start firing at him. Ends up recentering on him, gets the oh kill, God. gets the thirst. He's pinched in between no. two players. And then the only thing really he could have done differently besides the shock, the, you know, the, the shock, not the shock stick, the pre-fire is throw that shock stick against this back wall. Like, cause he has a shock stick right here. And if he threw it right here, this is one of the most overpowered, like, tacticals i think i've ever seen in the game it stops you from reloading it stops you from plating if it hits you it stops you from sprinting it makes you mag dump your gun while you're like shocked and so you run out of ammo because everyone's rocking limited ammo like capacities compared to you know previous war zones where everyone has a 70 round mag and so it's if if you've been hit by a shock stick you'll understand what i'm talking about it's pretty insane
If he plays his life. I think he saw that guy to the left. Yep. Gets the kill. Instantly checks his back for the flank. And nice. So five kills with 96 left. Unlike some of the videos that we've seen in the past where people are playing and they're getting fed by their teammates, whether it's fed UAVs or fed, you know, they're like live pinging them and they're they're giving them free kills, basically. Mutex is getting over 40. Apparently, he almost got 50 in this game. And he's doing it without that backup, right? So the economy pacing. Oh, see this guy to his left. That's good shots. The economy pacing, the, the, the killing, the damaging is all going to be on him. For those of you who aren't aware, Mutex is a search and destroy veteran in the scene. Oh my gosh. Nice thing is, when you get headshot sniped in this game, you are left with 1 HP. It does 299 damage. Because he has the 3 armor plate, he's able to tank it. I personally wouldn't be shouldering it, but he's a demon. Able to swing the corner, even though there is no movement in this game. Peeker's advantage pays off. He gets the kill. Yes, yeah, Mutex is one of the best search and destroy players uh, out there. Oof. And uh, he's used to rocking that iron sight scar. One thing I will say, though. Okay, so this chow right here is clean. Okay, it's, it's all about where we expect the enemy to be, right? So if we expect the enemy to be right here, and obviously we're, we're guessing, right? We want to challenge to, way, to where that way when we round the corner, our gun comes up. Because when we, when we do that little b-hop, right? So let's say this is the arc of our b-hop. In the first part of that b-hop, all through here, we cannot get our gun aimed down sight. And then on the second part of the b-hop, our gun will be aimed down sight, but we're still holding lateral momentum. So what we don't want to do is challenge so close to someone who's more than likely already pre-aimed at us. We want to be able to challenge them with our gun up and ready. We don't want to challenge them too close and end up, you know, with our gun in the pullout animation, which is what happens right here. So this is beautiful. Then he jumps right here. Of course, he's not even rounding the corner. He's literally out in front of him. But fortunately, he has an SMG, which has a faster sprint to fire, faster pullout time. If he was doing that with an AR, he probably would have lost that gunfight. Obviously, that little theory about when we're jumping to time our turns is all dependent on the sprint to fire and aim down sight of our individual weapon. Shout out, Spider Ryan. Appreciate you, bro. He has money to buy his guns, but he's got good enough ground loot. Shoots this guy in the back. Shouldering for information. Spots the guy. Repositions for full plates. If the guy did ego, what would happen? You know, we're not hiding right here where we could get taken out. We're hiding behind a corner where we could bait them, basically. And spots him on the ground. Now, Mutex changed his, his interface. The colors here are green. Me personally, I like everything red. Red is dead. Red is bad. But that's just a personal preference on his end. And there's the 20 cents. So he's rocking the MX-9. Absolutely slammed. Baits this guy out. So great shots on the first guy. Spots this guy. I don't know if he spots him. I don't think he does. This guy's peeking out the window. It's a little shimmy to miss the shot. Dolphin dives forward. Expects the guy to recommit. Double checks back. And just completely fries him. It's clean. That's clean. He was checking up there to make sure no one's camping him. One thing you can do, though, if you, if you saw this in my previous coaching video, you can jump off and get yourself so at the very top. 
what you can do is you can jump right here. Once you're stuck in this animation of getting off, you cannot get off. You can jump off and you'll float and you can kind of like look up and then grab back on, climb up, float, look back off. And then when you know it's clear, you can commit to the animation of getting off. Here's the elevator ding. And you can see he's got not red, but a green dot with an arrow below it. So you guys already know when it comes to the radar, you've got three options. It can either be solid, and that means they are on your level, right? So if, if, if you're standing here on the ground, that means that person would be standing right here next to you, okay? If you see an arrow above it, that means that person is now going to be up on a rooftop. You don't know how high, but they're going to be above you. Okay. And then opposite would be if you are now up on the rooftop and they are below you. So it gives you elevation cues. He hears the elevator ding and he knows that guy's below him. So he instantly runs down. Breaks in, sees both of them. Pulls out his AR for the long range gunfight. And just guns both of those guys. That MX-9 looks good, though. I, ha I haven't seen this gun used, but it looks like it's got really good, like, aim down sight walking speed. Just like this this strafe that he hits right here seems to come out of the strafe really quick, which could be really good for breaking someone's someone's aim. Okay, so he spots someone right here. He spots a dune buggy going below him. I don't know if he realizes that he can jump off. In order to jump, all you literally do is press the jump button. Sees that the guys are getting out. Spots them coming up, starts to pre-aim the grap, which means they're probably going to be coming up the elevator. Timmy, Timmy, get in the elevator. We're waiting for you. Come on, Timmy. Gas is inbound. Safe zone. Bing. Gets one kill, instantly turns around with the pre-fire, expecting someone else to be there. I uh -oh. do. He didn't mean to go down the elevator. He was pressing square to reload, and that ended up bringing his. Um, he was pressing square to reload. It ended up activating the elevator. He threw the smoke because he knew he was probably going to get ambushed because he's playing squads and he only killed two, which probably means that guy up top is calming. He's going down the elevator, going down the elevator. So Mutex throws the smoke, spots a guy running right there. Goes out to challenge him. He also spots a guy on his right. Right there. I'll show it just so you guys can see it. Right there. Oh, that's not a person. I'm cracked. That's a pylon. I'm cracked. I just know he's looking for a fourth somewhere. And it looks like someone up top called the elevator. So now he's egoing the, the challenge up top. Or maybe the guy called the elevator. That may have happened animated. Maybe the guy at the bottom called the elevator and pulled Mutex down. That very well could have happened too. So he's got two full kills. He's still looking potentially for the fourth because the guys up top could have gotten rezzed. I want to point something out real quick that a lot of people don't realize. With your guns in this game, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move my face cam just so you guys can see. With the guns in this game, you don't need to, and he may or may doing this may or may not be doing this intentional. You don't need to carry your ammo in your backpack because with your loadout, you have a dedicated ammo supply for each one of your guns, and those ammo supplies are not connected to those in your backpack. You have a dedicated ammo slot right inside of here that each gun carries. So if you're ever wondering why you have 200 rounds of ammunition, but you have zero in your backpack, it's because this slot right here saves ammo for the ammo type of the gun you're using. Nice. Dude, he's he's gotten really lucky. He's had a lot of people push to him. Tom J, thank you for the 17 kills, 69 giggity left in the lobby. Now he does what I typically do in a situation like this where I 
go up to the top of high rise and I start to scan around and see where potential enemies are. Bounties for us to do. Nice. We got one right here. Love that. Goes for bounties. It's not as good as it used to be. I mean, bounties will give you money, but it's not like you can use that money for too much else because you can't farm UAVs. But fortunately, spot someone coming in out of the gulag. You do have to be careful, though, because gulag pistols are crazy, crazy powerful. Gets the bounty right next to him. 22 kills, 58 left alive. He's kind of being a little bit careful here. Notice how he, he jumps up on this part as opposed to mantling up and over. Of course, I don't know if he can mantle up and over on this. You want to avoid getting stuck on a mantle on walls because it's by the time you finish the mantle animation, you can get killed. So he mantles short. Cracks him, spots the other guy. Uses the bomb drone, big brain. And if you guys don't know, these are one hit kill potential, even with full plates. But that is the only outplay. And that is sh shutting a door unless you break through the window. I didn't know that was possible. Opens the door to bait out the pre-aim. Gets the guy who self-revived. Cameras this guy. And now he's looking for the third. There was a third on the bomb drone. Here's the footsteps. The guy's stuck with an AR in his hand. Mutex gets the free kill. 25 left, 49 remaining. All right, so jump ahead real quick. Mutex grabbed the vehicle. It did a triple split on the zone. So I honestly, I think in pubs, it's going to make this game a lot more fun to have multiple circles. It's going to make things a lot less consistent for people that are trying to play competitively because it's no longer just about, oh, I'm going to hold center zone. You're constantly getting pulled across the map, which I think rewards a more skilled player for being able to adapt in the moment. But it's not going to be as consistent because you could all of a sudden be in great positioning and then get held. So he gets tunnel vision. He's going after the loadout. Gets rolled up on by a full squad. His vehicle's crazy weak. Now it's disabled, but he's able to get to his close, close building. And they're just starting to trickle in. That's one. And it's just back like the Verdansk days. Playing stairwells, playing high grounds. It's one knocked. He's got to be careful. There's one on the buy. He could get pushed, which is why he's getting himself away from that doorway, I would assume. Unless he spots all three. I only see I only see two out there. Yep, there he is. There's a third. And they just trickle in. That's how it happens. First guy gets greedy. He starts shooting at the other two. Second guy thinks he's going to get a free kill. Gets picked off. Utex here's another one in the stairwell. So as soon as he gets this knock, he's going to turn around with his SMG. Oh, or he's going to ego this. And then pre-aim the top. He's looking for the last one. He saw him. Get some 1 HP. Oh my gosh, this team is in shambles. This team is in absolute shambles. Gets the full plates. You got to be really careful when you're running up these stairs to clear off these corners. People love to just sit in those corners. Shouldering for info. The last guy is absolutely shaking. Oh my gosh. That's just fantastic movement. People say there's no movement meta in this game. Okay, just because we're not breaking our fingers every day, slide canceling on our scuffs, doesn't mean there's no movement meta. Stacking up plates. But that's another thing. Like, he has an opportunity here to pick up nine plates. But he already has 240 AR. And he already has 180 SMG. He doesn't need this ammo. Or at the very least, you hold one extra stack of each. But you sure as heck don't need these two. Drop, drop, pick up, pick up, pick up. Fill your three slots right here. No. 
Oh my goodness. Great reaction there. Starts shooting at one. Sees another one come out from the same spot. Gets out one HP. He heard someone drop above him, which is more than likely a different team from one of the first guys that he killed. He's up here looking for that person. Holds an off angle. He's got to be careful, though, because his laser is showing. What you can sometimes do is put your laser right here and then shift your aim as soon as they come through the doorway so that way you're not giving up that you are pre-aimed. We un ADSs, which takes the laser away. It's a knock and a thirst. That's an ego child and a half. He only has 10 bullets left. Goes in, make sure there's not a third. Third's running up the stairs right now. Oh my oh, goodness. Man. Oh my, oh my goodness. God. <laughs> it's just like for dance all over again. I haven't seen gunfights like that since like 2021, man. Just the ability to, to wait people out isolate them one by one as they're coming up the stairs unless you are just all holding hands child together child together like you're you're getting slammed by someone like this with a strong smg good movement really well played there he's got to reload his smg though one thing you'll notice a lot of people that are doing they they melee and what that does is it technically stops you and then allows you to re uh vehicle, re pop your um tactical sprint right because when we play this game most people are playing to get double time and double time will allow us that doubled uh tactical sprint all right gets in the vehicle looks like he's not going to play for the people to hold which actually isn't a bad idea Okay, this is kind of a theory on getting high kill games that we've talked about in the past, right? We want to kill people that are about to kill each other, right? There's two two squads right here fighting, and there's another squad right here, and maybe a straggler right here. There's two players right here. They're going to be here all game, right? When the zone closes, they're probably going to be posted up right here. They're not going anywhere. But these guys are going to kill each other. So the goal is we want to kill the people who are going to kill each other before we kill the stragglers on the edge of the zone. We save them for later. So that's exactly what Mutex is doing. He's pushing in towards the chaos. He gets out of his car early. It was a little bit less obvious where he's coming from. He's got 34 kills, 30 players left alive. You can see there, just by how quick that gun is coming up, he is using auto attack sprint. Spots a guy on the top. Gets the knock. Headshot multiplier in this game is everything, boys. Make sure you are abusing it. He hears the footsteps over there, but he wants to capitalize on his knock. He hears the res going in. Downs the guy resing him. Tries to go for the other kill. Gets the kill robbed. Knows there's two other on the, on the opposite roof. Gets inside. Swings aggressively. What? Gets hit through the wall. He's trying to stay composed. Let me break down what happened here. That, that was really fast what happened, right? Gets a knock up top. Here's footsteps on his left. Not sure where they are. As he climbs up the ladder, he's clearing out his left. Okay. As he comes up here, he hears the res of the res going in. Shoots the guy until he knocks and then stops shooting. He then uses the 21 bullets he has left to try to challenge this guy who is still alive at the moment because he's trying to get that kill as well because he can thirst these guys later. It doesn't really matter. That guy gets shot in his back. You can see the bullets coming through on the lower right, lower left part of the screen. So he gets behind cover, finishes off these two kills, and now he's ready to challenge that rooftop. But then an airstrike comes in. 
Reloads, spots a guy right here, shoulders behind. Tack sprints through to break his camera. What? Gets Peeker's advantage, but ends up getting hit most likely through that roof. Holy plates up. Here's the res is going off. Clears off the opposite rooftop first, and then he's probably going to look over at the buy station. Yep. $25,000. No more self-revive, though. Spots two people on the rooftop. Gets the guy closer to the ladder first, because he's the guy that's going to get undercover faster. Gets the thirsts. Jumps down. Oh, my God. That's really ambitious. I'll be honest. Gets the self-revive. Gets the kill. Gets the 40. I might drop a f first ever 50. Holy bro. I might drop the first ever 50. I'm not even kidding. Oh my God, brother. 40 kills, 20 left alive. Still the potential to drop 50 kills. Lost the guy running across the open. He didn't have any plates, gets beamed. He has the option to go to the buy station for a UAV. He can go for a UAV and possibly a self-revive, but it's risky. Spot someone inside, gets the kill, goes back to where it's safe. Plates, but shouldering for information the entire time. There is a UAV available. There also is a gas mask available. I don't know if he has a gas mask yet. Just here's this guy just... Just absolutely wetting his pants, heading into the bathroom. Gets the information that he's got a full team behind him, okay? So he's got a full team here, a full team here, and a full team here. What I will say, and this is something I've learned from myself, and also two things to notice here as, as, as we begin to wrap this up. Okay, one, he's got $21,000. Okay, we can't spam by UAVs anymore. So we have to make sure we have the things that we need to have. And that includes self-revive. So he does not have self-revive. And I also don't think he has a gas mask. Gas mask show up right there. So he's missing a self-revive and he's missing a gas mask. Both things that you can buy inside of the buy station. Actually, gas stations aren't guaranteed to be in the buy station and neither are self-revives. But we at the very least know a durable was in there. Other things you can buy. Airstrikes. Obviously, he doesn't want to stand out in the buy station too long. But... We got to utilize our money if we can. Other thing that I wanted to point out. Notice how these are not tucked into the corner like they are on a lot of people's streams. All of these are pushed forward. And the reason is, is you can change this in your HUD interface to make sure the boundaries are pushed up, which allows you, when you're looking at your crosshair, which is right here, to more quickly reference critical items like how much ammo do I have left? How many kills do I have? How much health do I have? What does my radar look like? Without having to go to the full corner of your screen, it's a little bit co closer. It reduces eye fatigue and it allows you to reference those things faster. So he's checking this side. He isn't checking his cheeks. I don't know if that building has an angle or not on him. I'll be completely honest. Spots one gets the down. It's another down. Two left. Riot shield. Oh, no. Gets the thirst. Guy in... <gasps> no. No way. No. No. No, man. Oh, my God. heartbreaking man that that's an opportunity to just make huge content right it's it's milestones and stuff like this which can really propel your career and guys like mutex want it bad man he's been streaming non-stop since the game launched the guy's an absolute grinder he had two down he had what almost three down and it looked like he just got the last second audio cue no. I think that guy was ghosted underneath him because when we look at this radar, we don't see anyone underneath him. We see a squad here. We see a squad here and we see a squad here, but 
There's five squads remaining. He's the fifth, and that means there was a the he's a fourth, and that means there was a fifth hiding underneath him. But ladies and gentlemen, if you want to shout out Mutex, the guy is still streaming. He's an absolute grinder. Go show him some love. He'll be linked in the description. He's one of the best players in the game. Huge shout out to him for putting up this gameplay and allowing me to review it here today on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a possibility to have high octane, high kill games. We just got to learn. And the people that adapt the fastest, like Mutex, are going to be the ones to get it to pay off. Make sure to join me live over on Twitch with these incredible gentlemen over here in the academy. And I will see you all on the next video. Peace.